Tocharian, also spelled Tocharian or, is an extinct branch of the Indo-European language family. It is known from manuscripts dating from the 6th to the 8th century AD, which were found in oasis cities on the northern edge of the Tarim Basin now part of Xinjiang in northwest China. The discovery of these languages in the early 20th century contradicted the formerly prevalent idea of an east-west division of the Indo-European language family on the Centum Satum Isogloss, and contributed to reinvigorate study of the family. Identifying the authors with the Tokaroi people of ancient Bactria Tokaristan, early authors called these languages Tokarian. Although this identification is now generally considered mistaken, the name has remained. The documents record two closely related languages, called Tokarian A, East Tokarian, Agnian or Turfanian, and Tokarian B, West Tokarian, Arkuchian. The subject matter of the texts suggests that Tocharian A was more archaic and used as a Buddhist liturgical language, while Tocharian B was more actively spoken in the entire area from Turfan in the east to Tumshuk in the west. A body of loanwords and names found in Prakrit documents have been dubbed Tocharian C. Discovery and significance The existence of the Tocharian languages and alphabet was not even suspected until archaeological exploration of the Tarim Basin by Oral Stein in the early 20th century brought to light fragments of manuscripts in an unknown language, dating from the 6th to 8th centuries AD. It soon became clear that these fragments were actually written in two distinct but related languages belonging to a hitherto unknown branch of Indo European, now known as Tocharian. Tocharian A, Agnian or East Tocharian, natively Arsi of Karasahar, ancient Agni, Chinese Yanchi, and Turpan, ancient Turfan and Zoko, and Tocharian B, Kuchian or West Tocharian of Kucha and Tocharian A sites. Prakrit documents from 3rd century Kroran on the southeast edge of the Tarim Basin contain loanwords and names that appear to come from a closely related language, which has been dubbed Tocharian C. The discovery of Tocharian upset some theories about the relations of Indo European languages and revitalized their study. In the 19th century, it was thought that the division between Centum and Satim languages was a simple West-East division, with Centum languages in the West. The theory was undermined in the early 20th century by the discovery of Hittite, a Centum language in a relatively eastern location, and Tocharian, which was a Centum language despite being the easternmost branch. The result was a new hypothesis, following the wave model of Johannes Schmidt, suggesting that the Satim isogloss represents a linguistic innovation in the central part of the Proto-Indo-European home range, and the Centum languages along the eastern and the western peripheries did not undergo that change. Most scholars reject Walter Bruno Henning's proposed link to Gutian, a language spoken on the Iranian plateau in the 22nd century BC and known only from personal names. Tocharian probably died out after 840 when the Uyghurs, expelled from Mongolia by the Kyrgyz, moved into the Tarim Basin. The theory is supported by the discovery of translations of Tocharian texts into Uyghur. During Uyghur rule, the peoples mixed with the Uyghurs, to produce much of the modern population of what is now Xinjiang. Some modern Chinese words may ultimately derive from a Tocharian or related source, e.g. Old Chinese asterisk mjit mi mi honey, from Proto-Tocharian asterisk mt where asterisk m is palatalized, cf. Tocharian bmit, cognate with English mead. Topic. Names A colophon to a Buddhist manuscript in Old Turkish from 800 AD states that it was translated from Sanskrit via a TW Gamma Rai language. In 1907, Emil Sieg and Friedrich W. K. Muller guessed that this referred to the newly discovered language of the Turpin area. Sieg and Muller, reading this name as Toxri, connected it with the ethnonym Tocharoi ancient Greek, Tocharoi Ptolemy VI, 11, 6, 2nd century AD, itself taken from Indo-Iranian cf. Old Persian Tuxari, Kotanesi Titavara, and Sanskrit Takara, and proposed the name Tocharian, German Tocharish. Ptolemy Tocharoi are often associated by modern scholars with the Yuji of Chinese historical accounts, who founded the Kushan Empire. It is now clear that these people actually spoke Bactrian, an Eastern Iranian language, rather than the language of the Tarim manuscripts, so the term, Tocharian, is considered a misnomer. Nevertheless, it remains the standard term for the language of the Tarim Basin manuscripts. In 1938, Walter Henning found the term, 
4 TW Gamma Rai, used in early 9th century manuscripts in Sogdian, Middle Iranian, and Uyghur. He argued that it referred to the region on the northeast edge of the Tarim, including Agni and Karakoja but not Kucha. He thus inferred that the Kalafan referred to the Agnian language, although the term TW Gamma Rai or Toxri appears to be the old Turkic name for the Tocharians, it is not found in Tocharian texts. The apparent self-designation Arsi appears in Tocharian A texts. Tocharian B texts use the adjective Kusanye, derived from Kusi or Kuchi, a name also known from Chinese and Turkic documents. The historian Bernard Sargent compounded these names to coin an alternative term Arsi Kuchi for the family, recently revised to Agni Kuchi, but this name has not achieved widespread usage. Topic. Writing system Tocharian is documented in manuscript fragments, mostly from the 8th century with a few earlier ones that were written on palm leaves, wooden tablets and Chinese paper, preserved by the extremely dry climate of the Tarim Basin. Samples of the language have been discovered at sites in Kucha and Karasar, including many mural inscriptions. Most of the script in Tocharian was a derivative of the Brahmi alphabetic syllabary and is referred to as slanting Brahmi. However a smaller amount was written in the Manichaean script in which Manichaean texts were recorded. It soon became apparent that a large proportion of the manuscripts were translations of known Buddhist works in Sanskrit and some of them were even bilingual, facilitating decipherment of the new language. Besides the Buddhist and Manichaean religious texts, there were also monastery correspondence and accounts, commercial documents, caravan permits, medical and magical texts, and one love poem. In 1998, Chinese linguist Ji Xinlin published a translation and analysis of fragments of a Tocharian Maitrayasamiti Nataka discovered in 1974 in Yanchi. Tocharian A and B Tocharian A and B are significantly different, to the point of being mutually unintelligible. A common proto-Tocharian language must precede the attested languages by several centuries, probably dating to the late 1st millennium BC. Tocharian A is found only in the eastern part of the Tocharian speaking area, and all extant texts are of a religious nature. Tocharian B, however, is found throughout the range and in both religious and secular texts. As a result, it has been suggested that Tocharian A was a liturgical language, no longer spoken natively, while Tocharian B was the spoken language of the entire area. On the other hand, it is possible that the lack of a secular corpus in Tocharian A is simply an accident, due to the smaller distribution of the language and the fragmentary preservation of Tocharian texts in general. The hypothesized relationship of Tocharian A and B as liturgical and spoken forms, respectively, is sometimes compared with the relationship between Latin and the modern Romance languages, or classical Chinese and Mandarin. However, in both of these latter cases the liturgical language is the linguistic ancestor of the spoken language, whereas no such relationship holds between Tocharian A and B. In fact, from a phonological perspective Tocharian B is significantly more conservative than Tocharian A, and serves as the primary source for reconstructing proto-Tocharian. Only Tocharian B preserves the following proto-Tocharian features, stress distinctions, final vowels, diphthongs, and O versus E distinction. In turn, the loss of final vowels in Tocharian A has led to the loss of certain proto-Tocharian categories still found in Tocharian B, e.g. the vocative case and some of the noun, verb and adjective declensional classes. In terms of declensional and conjugational endings, the two languages have tended to innovate in divergent ways, with neither clearly simpler than the other. For example, both languages show significant innovations in the present active indicative endings but in radically different ways, so that only the second person singular ending is directly cognate between the two languages, and in most cases, neither variant is directly cognate with the corresponding Proto-Indo-European form. The agglutinative secondary case endings in the two languages likewise stem from different sources, showing parallel development of the secondary case system after the Proto-Tocharian period. Likewise, some of the verb classes show independent origins, e.g. the class II preterite, which uses reduplication in Tocharian A possibly from the reduplicated aorist but long pi e in Tocharian B possibly from the long vowel perfect found in Latin legi, feci, etc. Tocharian B shows an internal chronological development, three linguistic stages have been detected. The oldest stage is attested only in Kucha. 
There are also the middle classical, and the late stage. Topic. Phonology Phonetically, Tocharian is a centum Indo-European language, meaning that it merges the palatovelar consonants asterisk k, asterisk g, asterisk of Proto-Indo-European with the plain velars asterisk k, asterisk g, asterisk g rather than palatalizing them to affricates or sibilants. Centum languages are mostly found in Western and Southern Europe Greek, Italic, Celtic, Germanic. In that sense, Tocharian to some extent like the Greek and the Anatolian languages seems to have been an isolate in the satim, i.e. palatovelar to sibilant phonetic regions of Indo-European speaking populations. The discovery of Tocharian contributed to doubts that Proto-Indo-European had originally split into Western and Eastern branches. Today, the centum satim division is not seen as a real familial division. Topic: Vowels. Note that, although both Tocharian A and Tocharian B have the same set of vowels, they often do not correspond to each other. For example, the sound A did not occur in Proto-Tocharian. Tocharian BA is derived from former stressed A or unstressed A reflected unchanged in Tocharian A, while Tocharian AA stems from Proto-Tocharian or reflected as E and O in Tocharian B, and Tocharian AE and O stem largely from monophthongization of former diphthongs still present in Tocharian B. Topic. Diphthongs Diphthongs occur in Tocharian B only. Topic. Consonants The following table lists the reconstructed phonemes in Tocharian along with their standard transcription. Because Tocharian is written in an alphabet used originally for Sanskrit and its descendants, the transcription of the sounds is directly based on the transcription of the corresponding Sanskrit sounds. The Tocharian alphabet also has letters representing all of the remaining Sanskrit sounds, but these appear only in Sanskrit loanwords and are not thought to have had distinct pronunciations in Tocharian. There is some uncertainty as to actual pronunciation of some of the letters, particularly those representing palatalized obstruents see below. N, is transcribed by two different letters in the Tocharian alphabet depending on position. Based on the corresponding letters in Sanskrit, these are transcribed M word finally, including before certain clitics and N elsewhere, but it should be noted that M represents N, not per meter. The sound written C is thought to correspond to a palatal stop, C, in Sanskrit. The Tocharian pronunciation, T, is suggested by the common occurrence of the cluster ski, but the exact pronunciation cannot be determined with certainty. The sound written S corresponds to retroflex sibilant, in Sanskrit, but it seems more likely to have been a palato alveolar sibilant, as in English, ship, because it derives from a palatalized, S. The sound N, occurs only before k, or in some clusters where a k has been deleted between consonants. It is clearly phonemic because sequences nk and nk also exist from syncope of a former a between them. Proto-Tocharian Vowels Proto-Tocharian shows radical changes in its vowels from Proto-Indo-European Length distinctions eventually disappeared, but prior to that all pairs of long and short vowels had become distinct in quality, and thus have different outcomes. Many pairs of pi vowels are distinguished in Tocharian only by the occurrence or non-occurrence of palatalization. For example, pi o and e both evolved into Proto-Tocharian e possibly but pi e palatalized the preceding consonant, and left a y when no consonant preceded, while neither of these occurs with pi o. Reconstructing the changes between pi and proto-tocharian vowels is fraught with difficulty, and as a result there are a large number of disagreements among different researchers. The basic problems are Tocharian a and b are relatively sparsely attested. The extensive mergers of pi stop consonants lead to many ambiguities in the potential etymologies underlying particular Tocharian words. The radical restructuring of the vowel system means that few potential sound changes can be rejected as unreasonable, no matter how unlikely they may look on the surface. 
A large amount of analogical change has occurred in both the nominal and verbal systems, making it difficult to identify which changes are regular. Historically, the evolution of the tocharian vowels was the last part of the diachronic phonology to be understood. In 1938, George South Lane remarked of tocharian that, The vocalism so far has defied almost every attempt that has been made to bring it to order, and as late as 1945 still asserted, that the subject of palatalization is a confused and difficult one is generally recognized but so are most of the problems of tocharian phonology however rapid progress towards understanding the evolution of the vocalic system and with it the phonology as a whole occurred during the period of approximately 1948 to 1960 beginning with sieg and siegeling 1949 by 1960, the system was well enough understood that Krause and Thomas's seminal work of that year is still considered one of the most important Tocharian grammatical handbooks. Despite the apparent equivalence between the Tocharian A and B vowel systems, in fact, a number of vowels are not cognate between the two varieties, and Proto Tocharian had a different vowel system from both. For example, Tocharian AA reflects a merger of two proto-Tocharian vowels that are distinguished in Tocharian B as E and O, while Tocharian BA reflects a stress-based variant of either proto-Tocharian O or A, while Tocharian A preserves original A and A regardless of the position of stress. As a general rule, Tocharian B reflects the proto-Tocharian vowel system more faithfully than Tocharian A, which includes a number of changes not found in Tocharian B, e.g. monophthongization of diphthongs, loss of all absolutely final vowels, loss of A in open syllables, and a penthesis of A to break up difficult clusters especially word finally that resulted from vowel losses. The following table describes a typical minimal reconstruction of late Proto Tocharian, which includes all vowels that are generally accepted by Tocharian scholars. The following table describes a maximal reconstruction of Proto Tocharian, following Ring. 1996. Some of the differences between the minimal and maximal systems are primarily notational. Ring's asterisk, equals standard asterisk A, and Ring along with many other researchers reconstruct Proto Tocharian surface asterisk I and asterisk U as underlying asterisk I. Asterisk a, asterisk e, asterisk w in Ring's notation. However, Ring reconstructs three vowels asterisk e, asterisk e, asterisk e in place of the single vowel asterisk e in the minimal system. The primary distinction is between asterisk e. Some scholars use a different notation from what is given above, e.g. a or e in place of the e of the minimal system, a or, in place of the o of the minimal system, and, in place of a. The following table shows the changes from Proto-Indo-European to Proto-Tocharian and on to Tocharian B -tb and Tocharian A -ta, using the notation of the minimal system above. Notes. The last six lines indicate umlaut processes that operated during the Proto-Tocharian period see below. A plus sign indicates palatalization. When following a consonant, that consonant is palatalized, otherwise, a y appears. Before pi i, consonants other than dentals are not necessarily palatalized researchers differ on what exactly happened, this is indicated as plus. A, sign indicates no vowel, this results from deletion of a in open syllables. Tocharian b reflects proto-Tocharian central vowels a, a, differently depending on whether they bore stress or not. This is indicated in the table above, stressed a a greater than a a while unstressed a a greater than a a i e. Tocharian BA reflects either stressed A or unstressed A. An additional complication is that unstressed A is deleted in open syllables. See below, Proto-Tocharian had phonemic stress, although its position varies depending on the researcher. Many researchers project the Tocharian B stress that is recoverable from tilde A and a tilde A diaresis alternations back to Proto-Tocharian. For the most part, this stress does not reflect pi stress. Rather, most bisyllabic words have initial stress, and trisyllabic and longer words usually have stress on the second syllable. A number of multisyllabic words in Tocharian B appear to indicate that more than one syllable was stressed. It is thought that these reflect clitics or affixes that still behaved phonologically as separate words in Proto Tocharian. Ring, however, prefers to project the pi stress unchanged into Proto Tocharian, and assumes that the radically different system seen in Tocharian B evolved within the separate history of that language. The outcome of the pi sequences ih and a when not followed by a vowel is disputed. 
It is generally agreed that asterisk ih became proto tocharian asterisk ya, a similar change occurred in ancient Greek. It is also usually accepted that asterisk ih likewise became proto tocharian asterisk ya, although it is unclear whether this reflects a direct change asterisk ih greater than asterisk ya, ya, or a change asterisk ih greater than asterisk yo, yo, skeptical smiley face, greater than asterisk ya, ya, echoing a similar change in ancient Greek, since pi asterisk o is generally thought to have become proto Tocharian asterisk which was not a long vowel. The outcomes of all other sequences are much less clear. A number of etymologies appear to indicate a parallel change asterisk a greater than asterisk wa, but some also appear to indicate a change asterisk a greater than asterisk u greater than asterisk u. Ring demonstrates that all the occurrences of asterisk wa can potentially be explained as due to analogy, and prefers to postulate a general sound change asterisk a greater than asterisk u greater than asterisk u following the normal outcome of asterisk a in other languages, but a number of other researchers e Krause and Slocum, prefer to see asterisk a greater than asterisk wa as the regular sound change. The outcome of asterisk ih is likewise disputed, with Ring similarly preferring a regular change asterisk ih greater than asterisk i greater than i while others postulate a regular change asterisk ih greater than asterisk e greater than asterisk ya. As elsewhere, the main difficulty is that, relative to other Indo-European languages, Tocharian is sparsely attested and was subject to a particularly large number of analogical changes. A number of umlaut processes occurred in the Proto-Tocharian period, which tended to increase the number of rounded vowels. Vowel rounding also resulted from the influence of nearby labiovelars, although this occurred after the Proto-Tocharian period, with differing results in Tocharian A and B, generally with more rounding in Tocharian A e.g. pi asterisk g cum greater than p tosh asterisk km greater than Tocharian A cum but Tocharian B cam. Topic. Vowel deletion and insertion Tocharian A deletes all proto-Tocharian final vowels, as well as all instances of proto-Tocharian A in open syllables which appears to include vowels followed by CR and CL sequences. When this produces impossible consonant sequences, these are rectified by vocalizing W and Y into U and I, if possible, otherwise, an epithetic A is inserted. Note that most consonant sequences are tolerated word initially, including unexpected cases like royalty, ys and lks, example, pi h rudros Greek erythras greater than p tosh r a diaresis tre greater than tosh a asterisk r t r greater than ardor. Tocharian b deletes only unstressed a in open syllables, and leaves all other vowels alone. Hence pi h rudros greater than p tosh r a diaresis tre greater than tosh b rodder. If necessary, impossible consonant sequences are rectified as in Tocharian A. Topic consonants The following are the main changes between pi and proto-Tocharian. Centum change, pi palatals merge with pi plain velars. Loss of pi d but not other dentals in a number of words when not followed by a pi front vocalic. Loss of contrastive voicing and aspiration, resulting in e.g. the merger of pi k, g, gh. Palatalization of all consonants before pi e, e, y and sometimes i, producing a number of new phonemes c, s, s, t, s, nu, li. Loss of final consonants other than r, including total loss of certain final clusters e.g. nts, the extant Tocharian languages appear to reflect essentially the same consonant system as in Proto-Tocharian, except in a couple of cases, a new phoneme n, eventually developed. This was originally an allophone of n before k, but became phonemic when vowel losses resulted in instances of nk and nk contrasting with nk, and occasional loss of k between consonants resulted in instances of n not before k. The proto-Tocharian labiovelar asterisk k eventually merged with k in both Tocharian a and b however, this clearly post-dated proto-Tocharian, because the former asterisk k often rounded adjacent vowels prior to its loss, in a way that differed between a and b, e.g. proto-Tocharian asterisk km cum, greater than a cum but b cam. In addition, according to Ring, proto-Tocharian asterisk k is sometimes retained in Tocharian b when directly preceding a voiceless consonant, particularly in Western dialect texts. Unlike in most centum languages, proto-Tocharian maintained separate outcomes of pi asterisk k and asterisk kl w. 
The latter is still reflected as KW in Tocharian B, e.g. Yakwe horse. Topic palatalization Palatalization was a very important process operating in Proto-Tocharian. Palatalization appears to have operated very early, prior to almost all of the vowel changes that took place between Pi and Proto-Tocharian. Palatalization occurred before pi e, e, y and sometimes i, specifically, pi i triggered palatalization of dentals but generally not of velars or labials. According to Ring, lack of palatalization before pi i was actually due to early change of i greater than w after certain sounds. Palatalization, or lack thereof, is the only way to distinguish pi e and i in tocharian, and the primary way of distinguishing certain other pairs of pi vowels, e.g. e versus u and e versus o. Palatalization appeared to have operated in two stages, an earlier one that affected only the sequences ti and dhy, and a later more general one, or at least, the result of palatalization of t and dh before y is different from palatalization before e, e and i, while other consonants do not show such a dual outcome. A similar situation occurred in the history of Proto-Greek and Proto-Romance. Certain sound changes occurred prior to palatalization, some changes involving pi dentals, see below. The development of pi ih into y plus vowel, note that ih develops to i in most cases in all other Indo European languages. The following chart shows the outcome of palatalization. Topic dental consonants The outcomes of the pi dentals in Tocharian, and in particular pi d, are complex and difficult to explain. Palatalization sometimes produces c, sometimes ts, sometimes s, and in some words when a front vocalic does not follow, pi asterisk d but not other dentals is lost entirely, e.g. e.g. Tosh a b or would thought most researchers agree that some of the pi dentals are reflected differently from others, contrary to the situation with all other pi stops. This in turn suggests that some sound changes must have operated on particular dentals, but not others, prior to the general loss of contrastive voicing and aspiration. There is a large amount of disagreement over what exactly the relevant sound changes were, due to the relatively small number of extant forms involved, the operation of analogy, and disagreement over particular etymologies, including both the pi roots and oblaut forms involved. Ring suggests the following changes, in approximate order, Grassmann's law, which triggers the change dh greater than d when another aspirated consonant occurs later in a word and which also operated in Greek and Indo-Iranian. The change d greater than dz, which occurred after Grassmann's law if it existed. Loss of contrastive voicing and aspiration which may have occurred after palatalization. Palatalization. The new sound ts palatalizes to s, this explains cases like tosh b sac, tosh a sac 10 loss of ts before consonants, even with this explanation, a lot of words don't have the expected outcomes and require appeal to analogy. For example, the assumption of Grassmann's law helps to explain only two words, both verbs, in which pi asterisk dh shows up as ts, and in both of these words, palatalization to s might have been expected, because the present tense forms both begin with pi asterisk dhe. Ring needs to appeal to an analogical depalatalization, based on other forms of the verb with different oblaut patterns in which palatalization was not triggered. This assumption is reasonable, because a lot of other verbs also show analogical depalatalization, but nonetheless, it is rather slender evidence, and it is not surprising that other researchers have proposed different assumptions e.g. that p tosh asterisk saw is the expected outcome of pi asterisk dhe, with no operation of Grassmann's law. Likewise, the loss of pi asterisk d in tosh a b or would topic morphology topic nouns Tocharian has completely reworked the nominal declension system of Proto-Indo-European. The only cases inherited from the Proto-language are nominative, genitive, accusative, and in Tocharian b only vocative. In Tocharian, the old accusative is known as the oblique case. In addition to these primary cases, however, each Tocharian language has six cases formed by the addition of an invariant suffix to the oblique case, although the set of six cases is not the same in each language, and the suffixes are largely non-cognate. For example, the Tocharian word yakwe tosh b, yuk tosh a, horse. The Tocharian a instrumental case rarely occurs with humans. When referring to humans, the oblique singular of most adjectives and of some nouns is marked in both varieties by an ending a -m, which also appears in the secondary cases. An example is enkwe tosh b, onk tosh a man, which belongs to the same declension as above, but has oblique singular enkum tosh b, onkum tosh a, and corresponding oblique stems enkum tosh b, onkin tosh a for the secondary cases. 
This is thought to stem from the generalization of n-stem adjectives as an indication of determinative semantics, seen most prominently in the weak adjective declension in the Germanic languages where it co-occurs with definite articles and determiners, but also in Latin and Greek n-stem nouns especially proper names formed from adjectives, e.g. Latin cato genitive catonis literally the sly one. Sly, Greek platin literally the broad-shouldered one. Broad. Topic verbs In contrast, the verb-verbal conjugation system is quite conservative. The majority of Proto-Indo-European verbal classes and categories are represented in some manner in Tocharian, although not necessarily with the same function. Some examples, athematic and thematic present tenses, including null, y, sk, s, n and nh suffixes as well as n infixes and various laryngeal ending stems, o grade and possibly lengthened grade perfects although lacking reduplication or augment, sigmatic, reduplicated, thematic and possibly lengthened grade aorists, optatives, imperatives, and possibly pi subjunctives. In addition, most pi sets of endings are found in some form in Tocharian although with significant innovations, including thematic and athematic endings, primary non -past and secondary past endings, active and mediopassive endings, and perfect endings. Dual endings are still found, although they are rarely attested and generally restricted to the third person. The mediopassive still reflects the distinction between primary R and secondary I, effaced in most Indo-European languages. Both root and suffix oblaut is still well represented, although again with significant innovations. Topic categories Tocharian verbs are conjugated in the following categories, mood, indicative, subjunctive, optative, imperative. Tense, aspect in the indicative only, present, preterite, imperfect. Voice, active, mediopassive, deponent. Person, first, second, third. Number, singular, dual, plural. Causation, basic, causative. Non-finite, active participle, mediopassive participle, present gerundive, subjunctive gerundive. Topic classes A given verb belongs to one of a large number of classes, according to its conjugation. As in Sanskrit, Ancient Greek and to a lesser extent, Latin, there are independent sets of classes in the indicative present, subjunctive, perfect, imperative, and to a limited extent optative and imperfect, and there is no general correspondence among the different sets of classes, meaning that each verb must be specified using a number of principal parts. Topic present indicative The most complex system is the present indicative, consisting of twelve classes, eight thematic and four athematic, with distinct sets of thematic and athematic endings. The following classes occur in Tocharian B some are missing in Tocharian A, I, athematic without suffix 2, thematic without suffix 3, thematic with p-tosh suffix asterisk e. Mediopassive only. Apparently reflecting consistent pi-o theme rather than the normal alternating o, e theme. IV, thematic with p tosh suffix asterisk medio passive only. Same pi origin as previous class, but diverging within proto tocharian. V, athematic with p tosh suffix asterisk a, likely from either pi verbs ending in a syllabic laryngeal or pi derived verbs in asterisk a but extended to other verbs. V, athematic with p tosh suffix asterisk na, from pi verbs in asterisk nh. 7. Athematic with infixed nasal, from pi infixed nasal verbs. 8. Thematic with suffix s, possibly from pi sk. x. Thematic with suffix skx, thematic with p tosh suffix asterisk nask, nask, evidently a combination of classes v and x. 11. Thematic in p tosh suffix asterisk sask, evidently a combination of classes 8 and x. 12. Thematic with p tosh suffix asterisk a nun topic subjunctive The subjunctive likewise has 12 classes, denoted i through xii. Most are conjugated identically to the corresponding indicative classes. Indicative and subjunctive are distinguished by the fact that a verb in a given indicative class will usually belong to a different subjunctive class. In addition, four subjunctive classes differ from the corresponding indicative classes, two special subjunctive classes with differing suffixes and two varying subjunctive classes with root oblaut reflecting the pi perfect. Special subjunctives, iv, thematic with suffix iv, thematic not athematic, as in indicative class 7 with suffix nu i, athematic without suffix, with root oblaut reflecting pi o grade in active singular, zero grade elsewhere. Derived from pi perfect. V, identical to class I but with p tosh suffix asterisk A, originally reflecting laryngeal final roots but generalized. 
Topic preterite The preterite has six classes, I, the most common class, with a suffix a2. This class has reduplication in tocharian A, possibly reflecting the pi reduplicated aorist. However, tocharian B has a vowel reflecting long pi e, along with palatalization of the initial root consonant. There is no oblaut in this class. 3. This class has a suffix s in the third singular active and throughout the mediopassive, evidently reflecting the pi sigmatic aorist. Root oblaut occurs between active and mediopassive. A few verbs have palatalization in the active along with s in the third singular, but no palatalization and no s in the mediopassive, along with no root oblaut the vowel reflects p tosh e. This suggests that, for these verbs in particular, the active originates in the pi sigmatic aorist with s suffix and e vocalism while the mediopassive stems from the pi perfect with o vocalism. iv, this class has suffix s a, with no oblaut. Most verbs in this class are causatives. v, this class has suffix nu nu a, with no oblaut. Only a few verbs belong to this class. v, this class, which has only two verbs, is derived from the pi thematic aorist. As in Greek, this class has different endings from all the others, which partly reflect the pi secondary endings as expected for the thematic aorist. All except preterite class 6 have a common set of endings that stem from the pi perfect endings, although with significant innovations. Topic imperative The imperative likewise shows six classes, with a unique set of endings, found only in the second person, and a prefix beginning with p. This prefix usually reflects prototocharian asterisk pa but unexpected connecting vowels occasionally occur, and the prefix combines with vowel initial and glide initial roots in unexpected ways. The prefix is often compared with the Slavic perfective prefix po, although the phonology is difficult to explain. Classes I through V tend to co-occur with preterite classes I through V, although there are many exceptions. Class V is not so much a coherent class as an irregular class with all verbs not fitting in other categories. The imperative classes tend to share the same suffix as the corresponding preterite if any, but to have root vocalism that matches the vocalism of a verb subjunctive. This includes the root oblaut of subjunctive classes I and V, which tend to co-occur with imperative class I. Topic. Optative and imperfect The optative and imperfect have related formations. The optative is generally built by adding i onto the subjunctive stem. Tocharian b likewise forms the imperfect by adding i onto the present indicative stem, while tocharian a has four separate imperfect formations, usually a is added to the subjunctive stem, but occasionally to the indicative stem, and sometimes either a or s is added directly onto the root. The endings differ between the two languages. Tocharian A uses present endings for the optative and preterite endings for the imperfect, while Tocharian B uses the same endings for both, which are a combination of preterite and unique endings, the latter used in the singular active. Topic: <laughs> Endings. As suggested by the above discussion, there are a large number of sets of endings. The present tense endings come in both thematic and athematic variants, although they are related, with the thematic endings generally reflecting a theme vowel pi e or o plus the athematic endings. There are different sets for the preterite classes I through V, preterite class 6, the imperative, and in tocharian B, in the singular active of the optative and imperfect. Furthermore, each set of endings comes with both active and mediopassive forms. The mediopassive forms are quite conservative, directly reflecting the pi variation between R in the present and I in the past. Most other languages with the mediopassive have generalized one of the two. The present tense endings are almost completely divergent between tocharian A and B. The following shows the thematic endings, with their origin. Topic. Comparison to other Indo European languages In traditional Indo-European studies, no hypothesis of a closer genealogical relationship of the Tocharian languages has been widely accepted by linguists. However, lexicostatistical and glottochronological approaches suggest the Anatolian languages, including Hittite, may be the closest relatives of Tocharian. As an example, the same Proto-Indo-European root asterisk hwrg h but not a common suffixed formation can be reconstructed to underlie the words for wheel, tocharian a war can't be your quanto and Hittite hercus. Topic. See also 
Language families and languages Pre-Greek substrate Tocharians Tocharian and Indo-European Studies Journal References Sources Adams, Douglas Q. 1988, Tocharian Historical Phonology and Morphology, New Haven, Connecticut, American Oriental Society, ISBN 978-0-940490-71-0 Adams, Douglas Q. A Dictionary of Tocharian B, Second Revised and Greatly Enlarged EDN. Amsterdam NY, Rodopi, 2013. Baxter, William H. 1992, a Handbook of Old Chinese Phonology, Berlin, Mouton de Gruyter, ISBN 978-3-11-012324-1. Beckwith, Christopher 2009, Empires of the Silk Road, A History of Central Asia from the Bronze Age to the Present, Princeton University Press, ISBN 978-0-691-15034-5. Beeks, Robert S. P. 1995, Comparative Indo-European Linguistics, An Introduction, J. Benjamins, ISBN 978-90-272-2151-3. Boltz, William 1999, Language and Writing, in Lowe, Michael, Shaughnessy, Edward L., The Cambridge History of Ancient China, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, pp. 74-123, ISBN 978-0-521-47030-8. Campbell, George 2000, Compendium of the World's Languages 2nd Edition, Vol. 2 Ladke to Zuni, Routledge, ISBN 978-0-415-20298-5. Carling, Gerd. 2009. Dictionary and Thesaurus of Tocharian A Vol. 1, A.J., in collaboration with Georges Jean Pinault and Werner Winter, Wiesbaden, Harrisowitz Verlag, ISBN 978 3 447 05814 8. Daniels, Peter. 1996, the World's Writing Systems, Oxford University Press, ISBN 0 19 507993 0. Hansen, Valerie 2012, The Silk Road, A New History, Oxford University Press, ISBN 978-0-19-515931-8. Henning, W. B. ARGI and the Tokarians, Bulletin of the School of Oriental and African Studies, 9 545-571, doi, 10.1017, S0041977X0007837X, JSTOR 608222. 1949, The Name of the Tokarian Language PDF, Asia Major New Series, 1-158-162. Karlgren, Bernhard Gramata Serica Recensa, Stockholm, Museum of Far Eastern Antiquities, OCLC 1999753. Krause, Wolfgang, Thomas, Werner 1960, Tocharisches Elementurbuch, Heidelberg, Karl Winter Universitätsverlag. Levy, Sylvain 1913. Tokarian Pratimoxa Fragment. The Journal of the Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland, pp. 109-120. Mallory, J. P., Mayer, Victor H. 2000, the Tarim Mummies, London, Thames and Hudson, ISBN 0-500-05101-1. Malzahn, Melanie ed. 2007. Instrumenta Tocherica. Heidelberg, Karl Winter Universitätsverlag, ISBN 978-3-8253-5299-8. Michael. Variation and Change in Tocharian B. Amsterdam, Radepoi, 2008. Pinault, Georges Jean. 2008. Crestomathy Tokarien, Textes et Grammaire. Leuven, Paris, Peters. Collection Linguistique Publiée par la Société de Linguistique de Paris, No XCV, ISBN 978 90 429 2168 9. Renfrew, Colin. 1990, Archaeology and Language, The Puzzle of Indo European Origins, CUP Archive, ISBN 978 0 521 38675 3. Ring, Donald A. 1996. On the Chronology of Sound Changes in Tocharian, Volume 1, From Proto Indo European to Proto Tocharian. 
New Haven, Connecticut, American Oriental Society. Schmalstieg, William R. 1974. Tokarian and Baltic, Lichuanus, v. 20, No. 3. Schusler, Axel 2007, ABC Etymological Dictionary of Old Chinese, Honolulu, University of Hawaii Press, ISBN 978-0-8248-2975-9. Winter, Werner Tokarian. In Ramat, Giacoloni Anna and Paolo Ramat eds. The Indo-European Languages, 154-168. London, Routledge, ISBN 978-0-415-06449-1. Topic external links Tokarian alphabet from Omniglot Thesaurus Indogermanischer Text und Sprachmaterialien Titus, Tokarian alphabet conjugation tables for Tokarian A and B Tokarian A manuscripts from the Berlin Turfan Collection Mark Dickens, Everything You Always Wanted to Know About Tokarian Tokarian Online from the University of Texas at Austin Online Dictionary of Tokarian B, based upon D.Q. Adams's A Dictionary of Tokarian B 1999, Tokarian B Swadesh List from Wiktionary Comprehensive Edition of Tokarian Manuscripts, University of Vienna, with images, transcriptions and in many cases, translations and other information. Sieg, E. Siegeling, W. Tocharisch Sprachreste, 1, A. Transcription. Walter de Gruder. Transcriptions of Tokarian A Manuscripts. Kim, Ronald I. Introduction to Tokarian PDF. Institute for Comparative Linguistics, Charles University.